Hello everyone and welcome back. As promised, in this session we are going to learn about the Access 3 edition. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, at first we will observe the logic behind Access 3 edition. Thereafter, we will observe how to convert BCD to Access 3 and vice versa. Now, during the study of Access 3 codes, we observe that these are non weighted. However, from the weighted 8241 or BCD codes, we can generate the XS3. In that session, we also learned that XS3 codes are sequential. Basically, once 0 has been assigned to the XS3 value 0011, which in BCD is 3, thereafter all the subsequent patterns are actually sequential. Moreover, XS3 codes are self complementary. Now, this much we have already seen. Let's now proceed to XS3 edition. Now, in case of access 3 addition, there are only two rules to follow. First, if carry occurs, we need to add 3, that is, this binary value 0011. Coming to the second rule, if carry doesn't occur, we need to subtract 3. Now, let me explain why it happens. Say we have a number A, which is BCD, and since we have added 3 to it, it has become an access 3 value. Similarly, B is also a BCD number, which adding 3 has become another access 3 value. Now, say we are performing addition between these two and we obtained C plus 6. So, basically adding A and B, we obtained C and these two 3s resulted in 6. So, this result is now an access 6 value. Now, in order to convert it to an access 3, we actually need to subtract 3, right? And finally, we will obtain the C plus 3, which is the access 3 version of C. Let me illustrate this with a proper calculation. Say we are going to calculate the value 6 plus 3 in XS3. Now 6 in XS3 has the pattern 1001. So let's take that pattern. Now coming to 3, if you observe the pattern is 0110, right? So let's take that pattern as well. Now if we add these two, observe, it will result in all ones. And see, we have encountered no carry. Now as our second rule states, if carry doesn't occur, we need to subtract 3. So let's do that. Now, if we subtract 0011 from all ones, we will end up having 1100, which is the pattern for 9 in XS3. And which is in fact correct, because 6 plus 3 is supposed to give us 9, which we have obtained. Right? Now, let me tell you an important note regarding the XS3 addition. That is, the number of bits must be same in case of both input and output. What I am trying to mean by this is, say we are trying to calculate 7 plus 3. Now, 7 plus 3 is actually 10. Observe, we added two one digit numbers and we ended up obtaining a two digit value in the result. Now, for the XS3 adder, obtaining this particular output from these inputs will be impossible. So, for that, we need to modify our input bits as well. So, 7 will become 07 and 3 will become 03 in order to obtain this two digit result 10 or 10. Let me show you that. Now, 07 is actually going to be this pattern 00111010. Now, why so? Zero's encoding in XS3 is 0011. So, that's why 0 is having 0011. Now, if you observe 7, the encoding of 7 in XS3 is 1010. So, that's why we are getting this particular pattern. Now, coming to 03, it will have the pattern 00110110. Why? Because 0's encoding is 0011, which we already have seen. And in case of 3, the encoding is 0110, which we can see in here. Now, let's perform the addition. Now, 0 plus 0 will be 0. Now, 1 plus 1 is actually 2 or 10. So, we will have 0 as sum and 1 as carry, which will be added with this 0 and give us 1. Now, 1 plus 1 will give us 10. Zero, so, 0 we will have as sum and the carry 1 will be added with this 1, which will eventually give us 10. Now, 1 0 plus 0 will give us 0 as sum and 1 carry will be generated. Now, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which in binary is 1 1. So, we will have 1 as sum and the carry 1 will be added with this one, eventually giving us 1 0. Now, 1 0 plus 1 will actually give us 1 1. So, we will have another 1 as sum and the carry 1 will be added with this 0, which will give us 1. Now, 1 plus 0 will be 1. And 0 plus 0 will finally be 0. Now observe, for this particular portion, we obtain this carry, right? Now in this particular portion, we obtain no carry. 
Now our rule stated, if carry occurs, we need to add 3 and if carry doesn't occur, we need to subtract 3, right? Since carry has occurred in this particular portion, therefore with this we will have to add 3 and since no carry has occurred for this particular portion, we will have to subtract 3 from this. So let's do that. Now with all zeros, if we add 0, 0, 1, 1, we will end up having the same value. Now from 0, 1, if we subtract 0, 0, 1, 1, observe, 1 minus 1 will give us 0, then again 1 minus 1 will give us 0, 1 minus 0 will give us 1, and finally 0 minus 0 will be 0. Observe the patterns, 0, 1, 0, 0 is the encoding of 1 in excess 3, right? Now 0, 0, 1, 1 is the encoding of 0 in excess 3. So yes, we ended up having 1, 0, that is 10. So basically, whenever carry occurs, we need to add 3. And when no carry is there, we will be subtracting 3. So this is how the excess 3 addition is performed. Let's now move on to the BCD to excess 3 conversion. Now for the conversion, we will be needing this particular adder subtractor circuit. Now here, we have three components, that is, the input A, B, and C in. Now we can obtain the excess 3 of any BCD value if we add 3 to that particular BCD value. So in A, we will feed that 4 bit BCD and in B, we will feed 0011, that is 3 in binary. Now since we need to add these two, so we need this particular circuit to work as an adder, right? And for that, in C in, we will have to feed 0. So basically, with this particular combination, we can make this circuit work as a BCD to XS3 converter. Let's now move on to the XS3 to BCD conversion. Now any XS3 value can be converted into BCD if we subtract 3 from that particular XS3 value, isn't it? Therefore, this time through A we will feed the XS3 value and through B we will feed 0011. Now we need to perform the subtraction in here. Therefore, we need the circuit to work as a subtractor. And for that to happen, through C in, we will feed in 1. So with this particular combination, we can convert any XS3 value to its equivalent BCD. So in this session, we at first saw the logic behind XS3 addition. Thereafter, we observed the BCD to XS3 conversion and vice versa. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will be learning about grey codes. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.